Remember, the Louisiana Superdome is the place that kind of popularized the throwing of paper airplanes back when the Saints had the 1-15 in 15 record. In fact, looking around the dome right now, I haven't seen as many paper airplanes flying onto the turf since that time. The idea is to get a paper airplane as close to the shoe as possible. And there's some very fine, fine prizes that uh, will be available to the person that does that. A first prize and a second prize, at least. And uh, we're being bombarded here right now. A couple just whizzing by. That's right. I'm waiting for the sun. Sirens. Uh, we haven't heard the uh, the sirens uh, taking place yet uh, because of the incomings. Uh, we haven't been nailed yet either, but we're going to get it any second now. Washita and Brother Martin, the Brother Martin Crusaders coming in. As we mentioned, Bobby Conlon, the Dean of Coaches, Washita. Mike Valerie, what a job he's done. It's going to be a great football game. We look forward to that. We'll take a break here. We'll be back to talk with the two coaches, Mike Valerie and Bobby Conlon, in just a moment. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. It's been an improbable journey, Coach, but you're here, and I know you have to feel very good. Yeah, we feel very good about being here, you know, but after you get here, you're a little greedy, you want to win. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a tough road to get here, really, you know, and, uh, but we came through 16 hard weeks. Uh, we played well, I'd say, for the last seven, eight weeks, and uh, we deserve to be, be here. We beat some good football team. Have you ever been part of a better football game than a week ago? Well, I tell you, Kenny, that, that's one of them things that make your hair gray, you know. I mean, it's uh, it was, uh, from a spectator standpoint, it had to be a great game. I don't want to coach in another one like that, though. I, I'd much have a lower score ball game. Well, in Washita tonight, you have perhaps an even more talented team, at least eight major college prospects, possibly nine on this football team. They are very talented. They're, like I said, you know, we played well, and they played well through the playoffs. Nobody's even really challenged them yet. We just hope we can come out and play physical with them, and we can give them a challenge, give them a ball game. But we feel we can. We have to stay close, you know, early in the ball game for us to have a shot. I know it's not the biggest. I know it's not the fastest team you've ever had, but it may be the best team you've ever had. They're as good as any of I've ever had. You know, uh, anybody that gets this far is a good football team. Uh, you got eight teams came down here to play, and every one of those teams were good football teams. We're playing an extremely good football team tonight. We feel we're a good football team, but we wouldn't be here. So uh, let's just hope we can come out and have a real good football game and nobody gets injured on either side of the ball. And uh, let's, let's just hope that the good Lord lets us score one more point than they do. All right, one final question. You want it to be an adding machine game again, or would you rather have a low-scoring game? It really don't matter. <laughs> At the last week, it really doesn't matter. Coach, <laughs> congratulations on getting this far. Best of luck to you this evening. It's been a wonderful season. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Coach Coach Bobby Collin, and now let's go over to Bob Pavlovich with Washington head coach Mike Valerie. Thank you very much, Kenny. We're here with Coach Mike Valerie of the Washita Lions, and Coach, you're here. That's right. We're here, and we're just glad to be here. You're looking at a tough Crusader football team. Let's talk about their defense first. How do you how do you deal with them? Well, they give us a lot of different schemes. They give us a lot of different variations. We've seen people in a four, but they're doing things that we hadn't faced all year, and it's going to be a tough test for our offensive linemen to pick up the different schemes and the different stunts that they give you. The Crusaders use the wishbone offense. The folks they have, Chad LaRose, Jason, uh, Jason Wilson. How do you stop those guys? I don't know. We think we've got a game plan, and we hope that it works, but, you know, they... That's the reason they run the wishbone, that they've got some good people with some good weapons there. Chad LaRose runs it as well as any high school quarterback. When you got people like the Wilson kid back there, the running back, you know, it makes, it adds to it even that much more. And like I said, uh, we're just going to look and see if we've got a good scheme in there. We think we do. And, uh, you know, they're going to move the football some, but we've just got to try to keep from breaking and giving them a the big one. Coach Washita is a high-scoring football team. Last week, Brother Martin proved that they could be a high-scoring team as well. Do you have any forecast for tonight? Well, not any forecast, except we just don't want it to be a high-scoring game. We want to think that we can go in there and try to shut them down offensively, and then for us to win the football game, then that's what we've got to do. Best of luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Coach Mike Valerie with us here in the pregame show of the Louisiana Gatorade Superdome Classic. We'll be back with the kickoff with Kenny Trahan and Henry Rando right after this message. This is where Michael Jordan kept practicing his jump shot when he didn't make varsity. This is where George Brett kept fielding after his team lost the state finals. 
Wildcat ball. And this is where Walter Payton played every game his freshman year as a drummer in the marching band. What do these legends have in common? They've always had a will to win. And they've always had a Wilson. Of all the things you can teach your children, the most important is how to find their own answers. So just look at them and sigh and know they love you. The Quad A State Championship game. The Brother Martin Crusaders and the Washita Lions getting set to begin. Ken Trahan along with Henry Rando and J.T. Curtis. One team, Washita, pretty much expected to make it to this point. And Henry, the, the Washita Lions indeed were very impressive this year. They had a great record with only one blemish and that by one point. Let's take a look at how they got here. Well, Washita is the District 3 Quad A runner-up, Kenny, and they're under the uh, leadership of Mike Bowery, a five-year veteran with a 39-14 record. And they came here with victories in the state playoffs over Booker T. Washington of Shreveport by an impressive 56-13. They then defeated Catholic High of Baton Rouge by the score of 28-7. They defeated Acadiana of Lafayette 42-7, and last week they demolished a Thibodeau squad by the score of 47 to eight. So, Kenny, this is a really strong football team from North Louisiana. And that was a Thibodeau Tiger team that had upset the uh, previously unbeaten and number one Shaw Eagles, and you have to be very impressed with that performance. Captain's meeting at the center of the field. For Mother Martin, the captains are Louis Provenzano, 68. We get a look at Big Louis, 230 pounds. Along with number 83, Chad Trosclair. And Glenn Ellis, the quarterback, uh, one of the captains for the Washita Lions, along with Chad Green, 42. The Brother Martin Crusaders, on the other hand, a team that perhaps was not expected to reach this far. They've continued to surprise everyone. And JT, one thing that this Crusader team has done is improve on a weekly basis. Crusaders and the Washita Lions. Brother Martin, the home team in the red jerseys with gold pants and red headgear. And the Washita Lions, the visitors in the white jerseys with the white pants, red numerals and red stripes. They will wear red headgear. Mike Valerie, the head coach of Washita. He's done quite a job at a school that uh, really just a couple of years ago was nowhere. Today they're one of the powerhouses in the state and they realistically figure to stay there for quite some time. And here come the Crusaders onto the playing field. Brother Martin, state championship game, record of 11 and three under Bobby Conlon. Involved in perhaps the greatest high school football game ever a week ago, a game in which they beat Ruston 59-56 in three overtimes. Ruston, the only team to have defeated Washita this year, 14-13 earlier this year, as the Lions take the field as well. We're just about set for action here in the Superdome, the Quad A State Championship game, about to get underway, Brother Martin against Washita. And Henry, I, I don't know what to expect here, but who would have thought 59-56 in you know, last week? Two well, that's just that traditionally that's just, have great defenses. Exactly, Kenny. Both, both of those teams are traditionally tough on the defensive side of the ball. Just to give you an example, Rustin gave up 70 points in the whole season, and then, of course, gave up 59 last week to Brother Martin. Right now, we're going to pause. 
as the playing of our national anthem will take place with the Brother Martin High School Crusader Band. formula they may have been the best team not to play in the state playoffs a year ago JT yeah there's no question about that Washita is a team of the future and certainly they're in the dome and so that means they're a team for right now they uh, have a powerful powerful football team an interesting note that we just made a, a quick reference to Washita outweighs the brother Martin defense 249 pounds to 200 pounds so there's a tremendous physical mismatch in the offensive and defensive lines but brother martin's the kind of team that plays tough the whole ball game and the key for brother martin as it always is ball control time of possession keeping the football away from the opponent they do that extremely well and one thing they don't do is make mistakes that's, that's why they're where they are because they don't make a lot of mistakes chad larose obviously a big key in the ball game has got to run that wishbone offense to perfection he's done it all year and i'd expect the same thing tonight three overtimes a week ago henry this was a football team brother martin that did not have a turnover in seven quarters if you will or five quarters and they also only had four penalties in the football game well they're going to play keep away kenny and if they can and if they can do that tonight they're going to be the quad a state champion i'll guarantee you that stanley jenkins to kick it off to larose and wilson he squibs it on the ground fielded by a short man at the 35 and fighting forward to about the 39 yard line for brother martin is number 40 and that is dante Escani who plays in short yardage goal line situations defensively for Brother Martin. It had a big play a week ago, and the Crusaders will start first and 10 from their own 39-yard line. An well, amazing thing, Kenny, about Ascani is that his daddy played in a state championship game in 1958. That's right. Peter Ascani, I tell you, he was a fine back for Warren Easton Golden Eagles. All right, the Martin offense up front, the tackles Provenzano and Hart. The guards are Stan and Buqua. Vaughn is an outstanding center. Wilson, the split end, Legasse, the tight end. LaRose, Wilson, Stack, and Lawand in the backfield. And an official timeout here. Of course, Chad LaRose, the Metro Player of the Year in the city of New Orleans. He does it all. Just a terrific player who has improved, by the way, throwing the football. It's not something he could do even a year ago, and now you have to respect what he can do. Adds a second dimension to their offense that they did not have last year. And I tell you, if they can control the tempo on the ground and Chad pick his spots throwing the ball, it's going to be an interesting ball game. Well, look at Bobby Conlon roaming the sidelines, the dean of Wade coaches and the winningest coach in the highest classification in New Orleans history. Here's the wishbone. LaRose under center, and we have a problem with the clock. That's why we have the delay. They're adjusting it, and they're still adjusting it. I tell you something very quickly that's interesting, Henry, before the ball's even snapped. Washita has been traditionally a split four front, and they have taken their outside linebacker, number 66, and have walked him out wide, wide to the perimeter. Evidently, they are determined to keep the ball off the perimeter with the lead blocker, so they've already got him stationed out there. And interestingly enough, Bobby Conlon changed the play. He sent Billy Marcia, number two, who runs in the plays with the starter, Chris Wilson, in just now from the sideline hey. after taking a look at the defense. Right. Might have saw the, the alignment of the Washington defense and decided to do something a little different to open the ball game up. All right. Now I think they finally had the clock set. 11.55 to play first quarter. And here we go. The wishbone offensive set. Chad LaRose, the quarterback. And he'll pitch. This is Lalonde. Gets a good block. Turns the corner and is nailed to the 41-yard line. 
Coming up to make the hit, Connie Ray Wilson, 47, the blue chip prospect, along with Lee Williams, another blue chip prospect. Well, they went right at him, Henry. And by golly, he lined him up out there, and Bobby said, heck with it. We're going to put the ball in the corner. Here's the lead block on number 66, and great speed in the secondary, and we're able to hold him to about a two-yard gain. Second down and eight, 41-yard line. This is Jason Wilson in motion. They give it to Stack. Stack is hit and dropped after a gain of a yard. Stanley Jenkins, the inside linebacker, 45 on the stop. And it'll be third down and seven yards to go. Third and seven, a short seven from the 43-yard line. Just underway, Quad A State Championship game, the culmination of the Gatorade Superdome Classic. No score. Brother Martin with his first possession of the football game. Wide right comes Chris Wilson. Everyone else is tight. Wishbone set on third down, and LaRose rolls. LaRose keeps. LaRose is dropped. LaRose dropped for a couple yards loss, in fact. And again, it's Stanley Jenkins, 45, the inside linebacker, coming up to make the play. But a flag is down on the play. Thrown by the side judge. This could work against Washita. Let's see. Either that or they'll blow the play dead. And Looks like it's a face mask call is what I think they've got. It could even be five or a face mask. Five yards on the white. That's what it was. Got a face mask call. Well, let's see if we can see it right here on the replay, JT. It's kind of hard when he's got his back to, to us. We really can't. Stanley Jenkins on the tackle, and he was the offender, if indeed he offended. We were kind of shielded out by 75, John Beckwith. Five-yard penalty does not give them a first no, down. No, puts them in a short-yarded situation, though, and that's, you know, that's where they want to be, right at the 50-yard line. This is right up by the Martins Alley. Third down and one 48-yard line. They give it to Wilson, and he finds the first down yardage across midfield and into Washita territory to the 47-yard line. First down, Crusaders, with 10-18 to play in the first quarter. Jason Wilson, who's combined with Pat Stack, great one-two punch in that backfield, along with LaRose. Wilson had 182 yards and five touchdowns against Rustin a week ago, and he's a fine player. I tell you, a big factor in the game so far has been the free safety. Six foot three, 195 pound Lee Williams, who has made some plays on the line of scrimmage. That's unusual for a free safety. Connor play, Wilson again, cuts it inside and runs forward to about the 41 yard line. Nice effort by Jason Wilson. He's a hard runner. It's one thing about these Brother Martin backs. All of them are those type of runners, very hard runners. Exactly right. Physical football team. They're going to pound you in there for four or five yards. Keep the chain moving. And another penalty against Washita. As we see the play finished off again, and that's Connie Ray Wilson. He's running through there, who's one of the best players in the state of Louisiana. And a penalty marked off in addition to the play. Another five-yard face mask penalty against Washita, and that gives Brother Martin a first down at the Lion 36-yard line. So a good start for the Crusaders here in the early going, and Washita having problems avoiding the face mask. Again, they send in the plays from the sideline. Al Ponoff, the offensive coordinator, with Chris Wilson and Billy Marcia, who alternate at wide receiver. Here's the fullback stack. Big hole for Pat Stack. Inside the 30, down to about the 27-yard line. Short of a first down by one yard. It'll be second and one. Just a quick guard trap to the right here. And Stack, who is a two-year starter, a seasoned veteran. You got to remember, this Brother Martin team got to the state semifinals last year. Only there it is. Ran a trap play, Henry, and I tell you, Washita penetrated so far up the field, they didn't really have to trap him. Yeah, that was 73 Beckwith. That was way up the field, and they went right by him. On second down and one. The Rose on the I pitch. They'll throw the halfback pass if they could. The receiver was open, but they couldn't get the pass off. And that's a tough break for Brother Martin. And give Washita credit for penetration. Well, Chris, R Chris Wilson, you're going to see number five here. There it is. It's going to be the halfback pass. Wilson just didn't have enough time there. You'll see 64 coming in on the play there. Clint uh, Perido and... Uh, but I'll tell you, Ken and JT, Wilson did a great job of faking. He was behind the secondary. And it looked like Connie Ray Wilson, who had the penetration for Washita. But it's third down and one. Again, the wishbone set, and they give it to Jason Wilson, and he rambles forward close to first down yardage at the 26. It's where he needed to get. See where they mark the football. Going to be very close. 
going to call the chains out in this situation. That thing's real close, I can assure you. So the clock stops with 8.27 to play first quarter. No score. Well, you know, they call the Brother Martin offensive line, Henry, the five little pigs. <laughs> and that's because of their diminutive height stature. They're not small weight-wise. Average size high school right. offensive line. Right, they're a good they... high school uh, offensive line. And they're going against a much bigger defensive line. First down, big, big, big play in the ball game. Field position, obviously, all in Brother Martin's favor. He can be patient now and open his offense up and do what he wants to do. First down, 10 yards to go. Crusaders from the Washita 26-yard line, 8:25 and counting. First quarter, Wade State Championship game. Holland in the slot. He is in motion. And they give it to Jason Wilson. Wilson fighting forward to the 25, and that's all. Good penetration by 75. Billy Jones, the 6'3", 225-pound junior, is in on the initial stop. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Now look at Chad LaRose, the Metro MVP, City of New Orleans. Legitimate 4-5 speed, and he's done it all for this team this year. Bobby Conley calls him the best athlete he's ever had. That's a strong statement from a coach that's had a lot of good ones. Here's the option. LaRose fumbles the football. It's loose, and Washita has it. Well, I think in the replay we're going to see they scrape the inside linebacker for LaRose, number 47, Connie Ray Wilson, and he made a big play. I don't know if the block was missed in the interior line or he was just that quick. Here's the replay. It's going to be 47 at the... Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be 45, the middle linebacker. The 47 recovers, Connor. There we go. Right They're going to have to account for that middle linebacker, and they just didn't do it. He scraped clean. I don't think Chad saw him coming, Henry. I don't uh, think he anticipated him being there. And the turnover hurts the Crusaders. Washita offense, a high-powered offense from their own 25. Brother Martin with eight men up front. And on first down, straight ahead for about three was Derek Williams, the fullback, the 5'11", 175-pounder. Williams runs into Jimmy Shug, among others. A gain of three, it'll be second down and seven. And interesting now that Brother Martin had eight men on the line of scrimmage on that very first play. One of the things that I think, Kenny, we're going to see in this game that's going to give Washtar some trouble is that they have never played against a defense, I would guess, to say that moves around and changes position as much as Brother Martin does between snaps and between series. Second down and seven. The play fake by Glenn Ellis. Wants to go deep as Wilson wide open. Connie Ray Wilson in the open field. To the 35-yard line. First down, Washita. Glenn Ellis to Connie Ray Wilson. A combination that's worked all year long, and this time it works for 38 yards. Connie Ray Wilson, a big play guy, plays both ways for Washita. Play action pass. They say he's got a great arm, and he shows it here. Right on the money. Connie Ray Wilson with a big, big reception. Well, you almost feel like you're looking at Rustin down there with that red and white. And the way they execute. And the brother Martin in a goal line type defense on first and 10. And they stop him for about a yard gain. Eric. McElroy, the ball carrier. Boy, that's a gamble. I'm going to tell you now. That's that's a very typical, though. If you know if you know anything about Brother Martin, they are going to surprise continuously throughout the night and try to keep Washington's offense off balance. People have said for years, Henry, that Brother Martin is conservative. That's C-word offensively, but defensively, no question. Chubby Marks is much riverboat gambler. Now he's one of the best. Second and nine from the 34-yard line. Off the play fake. Ellis in trouble. Ellis gets away from a tackler. And another. Still on the run. He is hit. Breaks the tackle and goes down finally. Losing about a yard at the 35-yard line. A great effort by Glenn Ellis, who had pressure all over the place. Credit number 44, Mike LeBlanc with the tackle coming up from his secondary position. It was just strictly a bootleg action. The play was intended for Bep, uh, for Brent Pellegrin, the tight end at 6'3", 195. And Ellis just couldn't find him there and was able to just get back to the line of scrimmage. So we're playing a third and ten here. Lenny Sumich had the initial pressure, which Ex forced Ellis out Excellent play and forced him out of the pocket, but we saw a lot of athletic ability out of Glenn Ellis that time. Wilson, wide left, draws double coverage this time on third down and ten. Ellis with time, looking, can't find anyone, scrambles around. He's got running room, but he throws, and it is almost intercepted. 
dropped by Larry Moore, the outstanding linebacker, the all-district performer. Jay, Brother Martin doubled the two outside receivers, and nobody picked up the tight end 86. He was wide open down the uh, far side of the field, but I'm going to tell you, Henry, I think the quarterback is called to throw to one particular place. He wasn't really reading the defense. He was throwing to a receiver. That's why he came back late to him and couldn't find him. So you gotta look at Mike Ballard. If you saw him early, he'd have had him wide open to six. And Brother Martin will take timeout. So a timeout on the field with five minutes to play first quarter. We'll take the break as well. Brother Martin, nothing. Washita, nothing. The Quad A State Championship game. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. minutes to play first quarter fourth and ten Washita the 35 punting situation and Stanley Jenkins kicks it high looks like it could be very effective it goes out of bounds I think it hit out of bounds at about the 14 yard line let's see if there any mark it they're gonna mark it right at the 15 okay took a strange bounce it hit out of bounds it bounced way back in it, it really did it really did, but they they got to protect the ball down here now. Try to punch out a first down and, and play the kicking game with them if they have to. So Brother Martin holds on uh, their first defensive series, uh, despite the big play from Ellis to Connie Ray Wilson. And the offense back on with Chan LaRose at quarterback. Milan comes way out to the right side, along with Chris Wilson. On first down. Lone setback is stacked. LaRose rolling right. Oops, wants to run the ball and will. Cuts it inside and gets it across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. He looks to have first down yardage. And LaRose turns the corner very quickly. Brother Martin got the spread formation. They, they spread the split four out. Here it is. This is a run all the way. The fullback's leading on the run to block it by the wide receiver. And they're going to get Chad in the corner with the ball. That's a heck of a play. And you really got to look at the blocking. They do excellent blockings on the corners. They really do. They really get to your legs and tie you up. Clint Perrado on a stop, and on first down, they give the stack. Stack ahead for about five to the 31-yard line. Hard running by Pat Stack, who I've been very impressed with all year long. He's low to the ground, and he's as hard a running fullback as I've seen all year, despite being only 175 pounds. I think Pat Stack probably is the unsung hero of this offense. I think he hurts more people late in the ball game with big runs up the middle. They start playing the wide stuff, and before you know it, Pat is up the middle and, and, and got a touchdown or a big gain and a big play. 985 yards on the year for Stack. Second down and five from the 31-yard line. 3.55 to play in the corner. They give it to Stack again. Tripped up in the backfield. Stumbles forward for about two. Again, penetration defensively. This time from 75, Billy Jones, who got a hand around his ankle. And Stack goes back to the huddle. After a gain of two, it'll be third and three. Now, Washita is a big front four. And there's no question they appear to be outside conscious. You would think that Washita would be very difficult to run outside on because of their great speed. Right, but I, that's what Brother Martin's done all year, though, Kenny. And I, you know, he's not going to change what, what, what he does well. They run the counter play, and Wilson is stopped. Line of scrimmage, shut down. 23, Dwayne Barnhill, the outside linebacker, third leading tackler. The senior makes the stop, and the Crusaders will have to punt it away. Number 73, John Breckwith did a heck of a job right there with a little penetration inside. Penetration will hurt Brother Martin through the course of the ball game. Fourth down, three yards to go, and Chad LaRose, who does it all, will punt it away. And deep to receive, the game-breaking Connie Ray Wilson standing at his 30-yard line. Short kick by LaRose. It'll bounce off the hands of Wilson, who picks it up now. And he gets away from one tackler, but he's dropped in his tracks at the 31-yard line. Good coverage by Brother Martin. After a bobble by Connie Ray Wilson, and 31, Mark LeBlanc makes the stop. And Wilson just picked the ball up with one hand. He just kind of reached down <laughs> like he was, you know. Well, I don't know if the replay will show it, but it'd be very interesting. I, it looked like to me it was one hand, too, Henry. Connie Ray Wilson, another one of those two-way performers. Great prospect. We have a right his own ticket. Personal foul against the white team. This will be the third penalty of the game already against Washita, and they're hurting themselves. Of course, Brother Martin has hurt themselves with a turnover. What's even more important than that, it appears to be a dead ball foul, which means Washita will now play first and 25. 
So first and 25 here for Washita, a difficult situation. And the field position doesn't help either at their own 16-yard line. But Glenn Ellis, the quarterback, and boy, he's outstanding. 6'2", 190, a senior considered a good college prospect. Not an indication why on that first series with that fine pass to Wilson, who comes wide left in this particular series. Brother Martin jumping all around defensively. And the draw play. And some running room for Toby Price. Breaks a tackle, 25, up to the 30, and close to the original line of scrimmage to the 31-yard line. Good call there. Larry Moore among those on the stop. And Toby Price, the leading rusher, averaging 6.4 yards per carry, gets 14 here. All they're doing there is they just won the lead draw there with Price, with Derek Williams, number 30, the fullback, leading the way. And boy, he's really explosive. He's got great quickness. The middle linebacker got lost a little bit in, in the confusion in the backfield, evidently, because I don't think he was blocked and just didn't make the play. Second down and 10 yards to go back to the original line of scrimmage at the 31-yard line. Brother Martin now with everyone tight defensively. They run the counter play. Cut it inside, and they got some good yardage as Price gets it up to about the 39-yard line, close to the 40. They'll be short of a first down by two yards. A gain of eight, it'll be third and two. Toby Price, 1,317 yards and 18 touchdowns on the season. See him in action. Back kind of, there's a kick-out block. They pulled the tight end, Henry. That That's Brett Pellegrin. Pull from the, from the uh, play side and, and trap the backside defensive end. That's a, a wing T type uh, a play that I'm sure they're going to be running a lot tonight. Brent Pilgreen, the tight end. Third down and two from the 39-yard line. Brother Martin showing blitz, and they're coming. And a first down and more. Breaking tackles and fighting forward is Eric McElroy. McElroy at 190 pounds gets it to about the 46-yard line. That's a pickup of seven yards and a first down for Washita. With just a power play off the wing tee, they ran a little motion in there. Eric McElroy, again, another big, strong back for Washita. 5'10", 190 pounds, gets the first down. The ball resting on the Washita 46-yard line. Even more impressive was they pick it up with first and 25 and, and didn't throw the ball. That's right. First down and 10 to go, 47-yard line. This is Toby Price getting outside. He's got speed across midfield into Brother Martin territory to the 44-yard line. A gain of nine. It'll be second and one, and we see the speed of Toby Price and the reason that he's considered a good college prospect despite being only 155 pounds. Nice play by Chris, Chris Twiner. He, he might have saved the touchdown right here with this tackle. He was the last guy that could have made the touchdown saving tackle on Price. And he had room at the sideline to turn up. Price is said to be the fastest player on the team, and on this Washita team, that's a big statement because yeah, they've got a right. great deal of speed. The clock winding down, they may not get this play off before the first quarter expires, and they will not. The first quarter has come to an end in the Superdome, the Quad A State Championship game, and at the end of one quarter, Brother Martin, nothing, Washita, nothing. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. The second quarter of the Gatorade Superdome Classic 1A Championship is brought to you by Gatorade, the official athletic thirst quencher of the LHSAA. By Shoetown, headquarters for name brand athletic footwear. By Louisiana Powered Light, LPNL and Energy Company. Partners, LPNL and you. And by Avondale. Avondale is investing in your city's future. Why don't you? Second quarter of action about to begin. No score. Washita and Brother Martin. Lions playing a second and one from the Crusader 44-yard line. This is Glenn Ellis, the quarterback. Washita with a drive going. Started at their own 16. They're in the power eye formation here. And the play fake. They want to throw, but great pressure. He'll get it off deep for Connie Ray Wilson, and it is caught, and he will score. 56 yards and a touchdown. Oscar Farinas went up for the ball to get it, could not. Wilson did, and Washington strikes first. Excellent play action fake and a great throw. The ball was light on the money. The Brother Martin defense was not bad, Henry. The boy put the ball right where it had to be. Well, here it is. See right here. Avoids the rush. Look at the ball right where it needs to be. Great play by Connie Ray Wilson. Puts him up six to nothing. Justin Clark, number 12, on to try the extra point. And he hits it right from the end zone shot there. See it clearly. 
And with 11.50 to play second quarter, the Lions of Washita have struck first. We'll see the touchdown one more time. 56 yards in length, and this was strictly a jump ball situation. Just faking the power off the, the tee. Ellis just airs it out here. I mean, he really puts a pass in the air. Connie Ray Wilson, tremendous catch. 11.50 to play second quarter, 7-0 Washita. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Stanley Jenkins to kick off for Washita. Jenkins hits it to Jason Wilson at the 20. Wilson with blockers is hit and dropped. Nice play at the 32-yard line. Looked like he had some room, but coming up to make the hit was 48 Ken Maxey, the junior, at 5'10", 163 pounds. And Brother Martin trailing by seven will start from their own 32-yard line. Well, the, the uh, touchdown drive was a two-minute, 44-second drive, six plays, 84 yards. It was a 54-yard touchdown pass from Glenn Ellis to Connie Ray Wilson. First down Crusaders from their own 31-yard line. They run Stack straight ahead, and look at the leg drive from Pat Stack. Hit at the line of scrimmage, and he picks up four yards. Determination, great effort from Pat Stack. We talked about so much, and Shad Green, the blue chip linebacker at 6'2", 220 pounds, makes the stop. Green is a guy with 4'8 speed, an honor student. He's big on the weights, has great instincts. Great middle name, too, Hayes. That's his middle name. He's already fulfilled his ACT requirement as well. Second and six, 35-yard line. LaRose has room outside, cuts it back, and is hit and dropped. And a flag in the secondary as LaRose gets to the 39-yard line. This flag thrown in the vicinity of Jason Wilson. Brother Martin missed the block at the corner on yeah. 49, or they'd have had a big football play there. They'd have had a first down, I believe. Looked great from the outset, but that, like I said, like you said, uh, one block was not made. We have holding on the red team, 10 yards. Our officials from the Lafayette Association here this evening. And we'll see it again. See if we can pick up 21, Jason Wilson. Well, you can't really see him in that particular frame, but holding nonetheless from the point of the infraction, puts the ball back to the 29-yard line where it'll be second and 12 for the Crusaders. Not the kind of situation they like to be in with their ball control offense. This is not what they want to do. Wide right, Chris Wilson, Jimmy Lalonde. The Rose rolling that way, throwing in a flat incomplete intended for Wilson. Not much there anyway. Good pursuit defensively by 66 Troy Bell, and it'll be third down and 12, and a brother Martin Crusader is down, and that's Chad LaRose. I think that's Chad LaRose down on the ground. Boy, oh boy, this is not something brother Martin needs. Well, what happened just now, Washita stunned an outside linebacker in a corner, Dwayne Barnhill, and he and both Billy Jones came real tough. And both of those guys couldn't be blocked. All right, with Chad LaRose down, we'll take a break here. 10.45 to play second quarter, 7-0 Washita. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Players in this field tonight are striving to be champions. The trophies next to me represent that. In your life, you ought to strive to be a champion. And one of the things that you can do is stay away from drugs and alcohol. If you have a problem, seek help. If you don't have a problem, let me encourage you not to start. Drugs and alcohol are killers to our young people in our country today. Stay away from drugs and alcohol. 10.45 to play second quarter, 7-0 Washita. Chad LaRose walked off the field under his own power. I think he may have just gotten his bell rung. We shall see. Billy Marcia, number two, the flanker, is in at quarterback as the backup in this situation on a third and 12 from the 29. And now the officials blow the whistles, and they're going to stop play now. I could be wrong, but I think we'll see a straight handoff to Pat Stack and a kick the ball. Oh, I bet you're right. And a lot of window dressing with the three receivers on the right side, and there you go. And Stack breaks it into the secondary and gets a first down to the 45-yard line. How about that? Excellent. Well-executed trap play right up the middle of Pat Stack. 
They've done that all year long, Kenny, to people, and have had tremendous... Here's a replay of it. Nice trap play, and Pat does an excellent job of staying on the block. 17 yards for Stack as we see him charge into the secondary. And good news, the applause from the Brother Martin side of the field, not just for the first down, but the fact that Chad LaRose is back on the field. Wishbone formation behind Chad. The 46-yard line on first down. They give to Jason Wilson into the secondary. Oh, one step from breaking it. Into Washita territory to the 42-yard line. I he mean. was a hand away from breaking that. Excellent kick out block by Pat Stack at the defensive end, and Wilson was a hand away from breaking it. You know, that's a mark of a good player, Henry. Not only does Pat run with the ball, but he also blocks exceptionally well at the point of attack. He really is a complete football player. And a 42 yard line, first down and 10 Crusaders. They give to Stack. This time he's hit hard, and he fights forward nonetheless to the 40. Pick up of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Stack never goes down when he's hit initially. Never. Not easy. This is a big drive for Brother Martin. They've had some adversity, lose their quarterback, had a penalty, and they got the thing moving. Shad Green had limped off on the previous play. The blue chip linebacker for Washita comes back on, but noticeably favoring one ankle. And that's a big item. His speed is a big factor in this game. If he can't run and get the ball at the corner, it might be a problem for Washita. They give the stack again. He drives forward to about the 36-yard line. Stanley Jenkins makes the stop. A pickup of four yards. It'll be third down at four for Brother Martin. Interesting conflict at the corner. They brought the, they brought the uh, strong safety right now to the pitch and tried to make a collision in the backfield, figuring the ball was coming to the corner. That might be something we'll see from Washita as the game goes on. And Shad Green leaves the game again, favoring that angle. Is. As I mentioned, that's an item. Very heavily recruited player. Receivers on either side on third down and four for Brother Martin. The Rose on the option. Not going to get there. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Great pursuit defensively. You just have to be so impressed with the team speed defensively of this Washita team. A yard for Chad. It'll be fourth down and three. And it looks like they'll punt, interestingly enough, from the 35-yard line. Huh? Tough decision to make there. It's it really four down is. territory. It certainly is. And, of course, Chad LaRose is the punter. This is a great spot for a fake. Not a bad place. Lalonde is the short man. Washita with one man deep. That's Connie Ray Wilson, as always. And they look like they're expecting a fake. The Rose will not. He will kick it away toward the sideline, but it's going to bound into the end zone, not even close, and a touchback. So that amounts to a 15-yard net, and that's not what you're looking for. No, that's not. Yeah, I'm sure he'd have liked to got the ball up a little bit higher and tried to roll it around in, down inside the 10 somewhere. So the Washita defense shuts down the outside option. Brother Martin, and they take over. First and 10 from their own 20 with 7.46 to play in the half. The Lions leading 7 nothing, And I would have to think that this is a big defensive series for Brother Martin. There's no question about that. And I'll tell you what else, Henry. You commented earlier, this game is flying by. It really is. Neither team is really taking a lot of timeouts. They're not throwing the football. They're in a position now where you got seven and a half, a little bit better than seven and a half minutes to go. And both teams has only had the ball three times. On first down, big hole for Derek Williams. Williams to about the 28-yard line. A pickup of eight. It'll be second and two. And that's the way Brother Martin plays defensively. It's feast or famine. They're going to gamble. They'll make some big plays. Here's the replay. He trapped it right up the middle also. And that's a tough trap that they executed because both guards were in one text, which means they were favoring inside. the inside exactly shoulder. You're right. Oscar Farinas on the stop. It'll be second and two from the 28-yard line in a full house backfield for the first time. And the second man through gets the first down. McElroy across the 30. It's about Brother the 33-yard line. Kenny, Brother Martin had 11 people within three yards of the ball. <laughs> they really did. I guarantee you. It was amazing. I mean, they had everybody but the water boy up there. You know, as this game wears on, it becomes evident that Lamar Green, 6'3", 230-pound senior tackle, and the other big tackle, Eric Bowie, 6'2", 290 pounds, are going to become a factor. Uh, they're going to have to do something to slow the ball down off tackle. On the 33-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for Washita. 
And they give it to Toby Price. He's got the great speed. He's outside, 40, and out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. He appears to have another first down. A pickup of 11 yards on the play, but a flag is down, and this one might come back for holding. We have holding on the white. Well, that's what it was, and that's a big, big play for Brother Martin. They got the ball on the corner, knocked the support down, and, and almost outran him for the big play. Number 20, Paul Johnson is coming in from his free safety spot to make the tackle. So a big 10-yard penalty will slow down the lines a little bit here. I think that's the right terminology, slow them down. They are very, very potent offensively. And we've seen those elements early, the speed of Price, the big playability of Connie Ray Wilson, the fine arm, and escapability of this man right here. No Glenn question. He, he has been a big difference in their ability to score and make big plays. First and 17 from the 27, and they run a draw, and it's wide open. Toby Price cuts it back. He's in the secondary. Tackle from behind. Might have been a touchdown-saving tackle, and he's close to a first down at the 43-yard line. Larry Moore made a touchdown-saving tackle right there. I don't know if the guy from the far side of the field could have got there and tackled him. Here it is, just a lead draw. They ran it before. Excellent move, and that's a big play by Larry Moore to save a touchdown. Clock continues to run with 6.05 to play. The first half, very fast-moving game, as we mentioned. A typical Brother Martin game, actually. And on first and 10 from the 44-yard line, Brother Martin showing blitz. Price going outside. He's got room again. Look out. Price in the secondary. Price out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Brother Martin continuing to gamble. Washita making them pay. Henry, it looks like they're trying to load up inside the ends to, to slow down the running game, and they're just bringing the ball outside. There's not enough support outside in. That's exactly right, JT. And, of course, I mean, you just have to look at the camera there. You're seeing where Toby Price is just outrunning everybody to the corner. Nice tackle, or really a touchdown-saving tackle by Oscar Farinas. The senior, 5'10", 165-pound safety. A 17-yard gain and first and 10, Rustin, at the Crusader 38-yard line. Again, look at this goal line type defense we're looking at. And a play fake. And Ellis stopping, throwing. Wilson, touchdown. 38 yards, perfect throw. Glenn Ellis to Connie Ray Wilson. Put the ball on the money again. Is execution, a thing of beauty. Look at this and they don't dance bad either, either one of them. Look at them. There we go. Well, everybody's on the line. Everybody's on the line. Yeah. Man to man. And again, Farina's just not equal to the ability of Connie Ray Wilson, who's just a fantastic football player. Well, he's in a difficult position, Ken. He's having to try to cover the guy from close to the line of scrimmage, and, and, and I'm sure they're trying to play the tendencies that, that they've scouted on the films that they've had, and, and uh, Mike Valerie's doing a good job of evidently changing up what he has done in the past. Well, and they have the ability to do that. that, that that's what makes it possible. We have a dead ball. Illegal procedure. White. So a five-yard penalty, and the extra point will come uh, from five yards further back. As a result, it'll be a 25-yard attempt forthcoming by... Justin Black, 13 nothing with 5.37 to play here in the first half. The drive, five plays, 80 yards. 39-yard pass, Ellis to Connie Ray Wilson. What a combination that is. We've seen it twice. Here's the extra point attempt finally forthcoming. And snap, they get it down, however. The kick is up, and it is true. 37 to play first half. And the Washita Lions have sprinted out to a 14-0 lead over the Brother Martin Crusaders. The Quad A State Championship game of the Gatorade Superdome Classic. That's our story. 14-0 Lions. A panoramic view of the Sater sideline, the box suites, the fans, and the scoreboard. And it's not pleasing to Brother Martin fans, but if you're a Washita fan, you gotta love it. Stanley Jenkins to kick it off. Rose and Wilson deep again. 
Chandler Rose has not really been a factor in this football game yet as Washita, like most teams, determined to take him out of the offense, and they've done a great job of that. And they have done that so far. There's the kick by Jenkins, and again, they kick away from LaRose, and Wilson has it. Wilson nailed at the 32-yard line. What a hit. Number 82, Princeton Jordan, Big used all 170 pounds to down Wilson. He hit him the harder than 170, I want to tell you. He, <laughs> he was all over him. 82, there he is in the middle of the field, and he's a, he's a middle wedge buster guy, and he does it right there. Excellent play. For him, they had a real nice wall yes, set up. They there. did. Great players make great plays. And this Washita team is loaded with great players. On first down and 10 from the 32 yard line, LaRose pitches. Wilson trying to get outside, and that's just not going to do it against this team. He fumbles the ball. Let's see if he was down or not. Let's see. What's the ruling? I thought he was down. However, we're waiting for an indication. We haven't gotten it yet. They're pointing in the direction of Washita. Now it looks like they're going to give it to the Lions. I never saw the official signal. Well, well the, the guy nearest the ball did not. The man from the inside, the referee came up and made the call. That's a fumble. I see. It was a clean fumble. It's a fumble. It's a good call. And Washita has forced the second turnover. We talked about Brother Martin not making mistakes, and they made two in this football game already. Well, the key thing right there was they had the ball clean at the corner, had the lead blocker with the guy on the ground, and 49, the uh, free safety catches him at the corner for about a two-yard gain. Anytime you can do that, it's going to be tough. Here's the give to Toby Price, and there's the speed we talk about again as he turns the corner and is out of bounds at the 26-yard line, and it's speed, baby, all speed. Defensively and offensively, that's what sets this Lion team apart from most. That, and they've got tremendous size to go with that speed. That's a tough combination to beat. Frightening. You understand why the scores have been as they have, as they've dominated people throughout the playoffs. Second down and five at the 26-yard line. Ellis, the quarterback. Keep it on the ground. Price hit hard. Driven back, short of a first down by about a yard. Inside the 23, it'll be third and one. Five. Just a power sweep. He cuts it back up inside, and, and uh, they do a good job of stopping him for the uh, as short as they did. Martin's really going to have to come up here. Now, this is a crucial play. You don't want uh, to go down... Right here before the half, four and a half minutes, three scores down. From the 23-yard line, third and one, and a first down for McElroy. McElroy across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Washita just controlling things here with 4.33 to play in the first half. And realistically, another score before the half could really put Brother Martin in dire straits. Especially with them not being able to throw the ball effectively uh, when they are behind by big scores. That's going to be difficult for them. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. Play fake by Ellis. Looking, throwing, sideline, open, caught. Out of bounds, Derek Williams. Williams inside the 10 to about the seven-yard line. He waited right there. Henry, play action pass. I think that's the halfback out of the backfield, and he does a nice job getting the ball to him. That's exactly what it is. He just rolled out there, halfback in the flat. Oh! Another good throw by Ellis, and he has been so impressive. I'd have to check his heels. Ooh, tough call. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> and in favor of Washington, and it's first and goal from the seven. Crusaders blitz. Price trying to get outside and does. Price turns the corner, and did he get in? Yes, touchdown, Toby Price. It's all speed. Uh, exactly. I mean, he had nobody. Martin is taking the interference away from him. He just outruns everybody here. You see him, he outruns Johnson there, number 20, and then he outruns Sumich. Who 
Crusader fans thinking he didn't get in, but I thought it was a good call. Justin Clack to try the extra point. And it is perfect. Got a flag. Flag down on the field. And we'll check the flag. We have four minutes left to play in the first half. And it's been all Washita thus far. Looks like it'll be offsides against Brother Martin or something against the Crusaders. Washita pointing that way. So we're waiting to get official confirmation here. We have offsides on the red. It was measured on the kickoff. All right, so with four minutes to play, first half, Washita 21, Brother Martin nothing. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. crowd on hand at the Superdome for the Quad A State Championship game. One side of game thus far, the Lions 21, the Crusaders nothing. Four minutes to play in the first half. And Jenkins will kick off for Washita. Deep to receive will be Wilson and LaRose, and this time they switch positions trying to confuse him. So they kick it on the ground and away from LaRose again, and Wilson alertly feels it at the 20, to the 30, finds some running room this time up to the 38-yard line. Jason Wilson, Brother Martin with good field position at the 38, and realistically with 3.54 to play in the half, they have got to get something done before the break. Well, that's right, Kenny. That last drive consumed one minute and 23 seconds. It was a seventh play drive for 31 yards. The touchdown coming on a seven yard run by Tony Price. Price, by the way, has had nine carries so far for 89 yards in this first half. On the 38 yard line, first and 10, LaRose, the quarterback under center. Gives to Wilson. Wilson, nice cut outside, 45. Past midfield and into Washita territory. He finished that run nicely and picks up 14 yards in the first down. I think we're going to see Brother Martin start to do some things offensively that they have done previous that I don't think they've done to date, Henry. They went unbalanced with the wing over, and they wasn't able to adjust out of the uh, of those eight-man front, and they had an advantage at the corner. That might give them a chance to get a score here before half, Kenny, and put them back in the ball game. And again, Shad Green limps off the field with an ankle problem. That's the third time that has happened. Connie Ray Wilson, who does everything, makes the stop defensively. First down Crusaders at the Washita 38-yard line. Stack to the 44 and taking some punishment in the process. A pickup of four, second and six. Those are tough yards inside the guards. Again, that was in unbalanced trips to the left just now. They ran the guard trap up the middle, hoping that they would get Washita to make some adjustment by moving some people out of the middle. Second down and six, the 44-yard line, 2.50 to play. LaRose fakes, throws, and it is incomplete. Nice play defensively, breaking up the pass. Trey Hill coming up to defense it intended for Chris Wilson. Well, I think they tried to guess with, with him defensively there, and they threw right into a due deep coverage, and were lucky it wasn't picked off. There you see, that's the free safety over the top. The corner had a jam, and uh, he was in a position to pick the ball off. Third down and six from the 45-yard line, with 2.48 to play in the half. Need a first down right here. Receivers left on third down and six. The Rose, heavy pressure, caught and drop. Stanley Jenkins in the backfield, and LaRose didn't have a chance. Didn't have a prayer. The back missed the block at the line of scrimmage, and Jenkins was free. Here it is. You see it. I, I couldn't see the number, but he missed the block on Stanley. And before Chad had a chance to turn around, he was on him. And LaRose will have to punt it away now. 2.23 to play in the half. Plenty of time for Washita to do some more damage. LaRose standing at his own 32-yard line. Donnie Ray Wilson is deep to receive a good look at him. Nice kick by LaRose. Wilson from his 20. Reverses field. Nice tackle. Number 48, Steve LeBlanc on the stop. Washita will put it in play first and 10. Their own 17-yard line with 2.02 to play in the first half. I'm sure Brother Martin would like something to happen here positive for them, a fumble or a, an interception, but they got to be careful they don't get beat deep again for another score, Henry. 
they do, Jay, I guarantee you we can start singing. Put the lights out, the party's over. And this man has been nothing short of sensational thus far. Glenn Ellis has thrown for 150 yards already. And whistle and flags on this play will not count. five-yard penalty against the Lions will make it first and 15 from the 12 with a minute 59 to play. Brother Martin would certainly love to get the turnover in this situation. Washington would like to take care of the ball. Should they break a play, then maybe they'll go for something. As we look at the mayor of the city of New Orleans, Sidney Bartholomew in attendance here this evening. I can tell it's election time. Yeah, no question about it. I'm going to tell Sidney <laughs> I didn't see him here last year. I, right. I looked for him. <laughs> <laughs> 12-yard line, first down and 15 yards to go. Wilson wide right. Ellis the draw to Price. Price cuts it back and dropped it about the 18-yard line by Troy Blanchard, number 80, the right defensive tackle. Block continues to run. Washita has all three timeouts. Brother Martin has two remaining. Second down and 10, they get back to the initial line of scrimmage. Boy, they've run that draw play with great success. They certainly have, and I, I tell you, it just appears that it, they're, they're, they're picking up five and six yards at a clip, and it's hard to get them behind the chains that way. The 17 yard line, second down and 10. to Price again. He's got interference. Price tripped up and stopped at a 21-yard line. That time, good job pursuing by Brother Mark, because that one looked good. 20, Paul Johnson finishes him off, the senior cornerback. It'll be third down and about five yards to go. After Ellis fakes that, after Ellis hands that playoff, Henry, he's naked bootleg into the weak side, and I don't think Brother Martin's checking him. He could easily keep the ball and maybe bring it up the sideline for another big play. And that's one of the things that you really teach in a wing T offense is that quarterback immediately after the handoff, his eyes go to the backside end to make sure to see whether or not he is respecting him or not. They've got it if they want it. Third and five, 22 yard line, clock running, 35 seconds left to play in the half. They run it straight up, and Brother Martin stops, and now the Crusaders should take a timeout. Clock running, 27 seconds left. Nobody's looking to the sideline. They've called it. Now they call with 24 seconds left, but they wasted about six seconds there. Yeah, they did. None of the kids were looking at the, the coaches were given the signal to call Tom immediately, but none of the kids were looking over the sideline. Yeah, that's a, that's a misnomer many times. You know, a lot of people think that when time slips off the clock and a timeout isn't called, that it's the coach's fault. And uh, as you well know, JT, sometimes it's hard to get the attention of your young men when they're in a heat of battle. Well, at the heat of battle, and I think Brother Martin's a little stunned right now. You know, they're down 21 to nothing. That's not the position they want to be in. Uh, they need to get inside and regroup to come out and have a chance to compete in this second half. Well, it's not a position they've been in either. No, because even the right. games that they Even the games that they lost this year, as we mentioned before, 24 seconds left to play in the half. It's not a position they've been in. They lost to Shaw in a very close football game. They played a competitive game with John Curtis. And, of course, uh, Central Lafouche beat them 21-7, but a game that was a lot closer than the score. Correct. Fourth and three from the 23-yard line, and a punt forthcoming. And they get it off in good shape, high. Fair catch call for taken by LaRose at his own 49 with 18 seconds left. Not a lot of time to get much done. They have one timeout left in this situation, and they're not a passing team. And, fellas, I'm going to play the devil's advocate, and I'm going to say, well, we, JT, you and I talked about this before. When you live by the run, you die by the run, and, you know, when you get down by three scores and you are a run-orientated offensive football team, you really have to have things to go your way the second half to get back in the game. No question about that, and what they really have to have happen is a turnover deep so they can get a quick score. And, and when you don't throw, it eliminates that possibility of a quick score. And the 49-yard line on first down, LaRose rolling, will keep this as a keeper all the way, cuts it inside, tries to get outside, but is stopped. Brother Martin has one timeout left, and they haven't taken it yet. And how they finally do, and again, they let four seconds slip off the clock. Well, just not an alert performance. Seven seconds left to play in the half. 21-0, Lions on top. We'll be back with more right after this. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic.
seven seconds left to play in the first half. 21-0 Lions on top of the Crusaders. Ken Trahan along with Henry Rando and J.T. Curtis. Second and two from the 43-yard line. LaRose stops, throws deep, and this is well overthrown and intercepted. Didn't give him enough time to get there. And watch out for this guy, Connie Ray Wilson. The time is out in the first half. Great block. Flag down. That'll be a clip. And Connie Ray Wilson is down, and the clip won't matter. And the half will come to a close on the interception by Connie Ray Wilson. And what a fitting way for the half to close. Man, it's really broken this game open with a couple of touchdowns. Intercepts the pass. On the final play of the half, the officials will discuss it, but it's going to be an illegal block. The interception will count, and the half will end. Well, like you said, Kenny, you know, Connie Ray Wilson, he's catching passes for both teams. <laughs> That's the truth. Personal foul. Clip on the white. Time had run out. The penalty is declined. That is the half. Time has arrived at the Quad A State Championship game. It's been all one sided thus far in favor of the team from North Louisiana, the Washita Lions, who lead the Brother Martin Crusaders 21 to nothing. We'll take the break here. Bob Pavlovich will join us at halftime from the field. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. We're at halftime here at the Louisiana Superdome, the Gatorade Superdome Classic, the Quad A Championship game. The score, the Lions 21, the Brother Martin Crusaders nothing. It's been a pretty much a Washita first half. We'll get all the first half statistics and information coming up in just a few minutes. Right now with us is the mayor of the city of New Orleans, Mayor Sidney Bartholomew, and Mr. Mayor, your son's on the Brother Martin team. Yes, he's a freshman. Uh, he plays tackle. Uh, I hope they can come back and uh, get back in the game. The Gatorade Superdome Classic has grown over the last couple of years. It's bringing in people from all over the state. It's it's a shot in the arm for the city. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I noticed today there were a lot of people downtown, a lot of people in the hotels. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of the reason is because of this game. Uh, and uh, we're doing good uh, with tourism in the city. So it, this game helps out, and I think that's a good shot in the arm of New Orleans. What position does your son play? He plays tackle. He's a freshman. Uh, you think he's going to get to see some action tonight? I don't know. <laughs> I, if the score remains as it is, I doubt it. Hopefully, uh, Brother Martin can turn the tables and be leading by 21 points. Maybe he'll get a chance to get in the game. Thanks for stopping by and talking with, 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 with us, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Sidney Bartholomew of the city of New Orleans. Right now, let's listen to the Washita High School Marching Band, 104 members strong, performing here at the Louisiana Superdome. Washita High School Marching Band, 104 members strong, performing for the pretty large-sized crowd here at the Louisiana Superdome. We'll have more halftime activities coming up here in the Gatorade Superdome Classic. As commissioner of the High School Athletic Association, we're extremely proud of our 70,000. Have been for a long time. As Henry mentioned, you live by the run, you die by the run. Brother Martin holds its own rushing, 25 carries, 106 yards. That's about five yards a carry, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Washington, 19 carries, 125 yards. 
And the difference is the passing game. Washita has hit the big play. 131 yards passing officially. Brother Martin with no yards passing. Well, that's difficult. You know, Chad is not the kind of a guy who can sit back in the pocket and throw the ball, and, and they haven't had to do that all year. And what they like to do is throw the play-action game and try to throw the ball when they're ahead of the chains rather than behind. They're not ahead of the chains, and they're behind in the score, and they're going to have to open up their offense a little bit and hope they can make a big play. Time of possession in favor of Brother Martin, as you would expect, but not a big margin. 13 minutes, 14 seconds to 10 minutes, 46 seconds. Washita simply dominating the first half. The scoreboard indicates the way this game should be. Well, and Washita has struck so quickly. I think one of their scoring drive was a minute and 30 seconds. Anytime you can put the ball in the air and get it in the end zone that quick, and uh, it's an explosive offense. Connie Ray Wilson and Glenn Ellis, what a combination. 56 yards and 39 yards, two touchdowns, and then Toby Price with that great speed turned the corner from nine yards out. Those were the three scores in the first half. And Brother Martin's going to have to do a little better job of getting some support from the outside. I, I, they've jammed inside a little bit. I guess, again, the tendency has been for Washita to run the ball between the tackles, but they're bringing the ball to the corner, and they're going to have to change their defensive thinking a little bit in the second half to slow them down. All right, it will be interesting to see what adjustments have been made in the locker room for Brother Martin. They haven't found themselves in this position all season long. Down 21-0 at halftime. I can assure you, Washita has had a number of opponents in this position. Well, no question. And the thing that Brother Martin's feeling right now is that stunned days feel that, that is this really happening to us? And so much is going to depend on how they reacted in the locker room and Bobby's ability to get them back out of that syndrome that they were in. Brother Martin will kick it off to start the second half. The Crusaders will have to be tough defensively to get things going here in the second half. John Katsaratis will kick it off for Brother Martin and deep to receive. Deep to receive will be for 20, Obi Price. We're just about set to get underway, second half. 21-0 Washita. Culmination of the Gatorade Superdome Classic, the final half of the final game. To the victor goes the spoils in a state championship. Washita, first trip to the Gatorade Superdome Classic. They certainly aren't playing like it. No, they're not. They're playing with a lot of poise. And the game's not over yet, Kenny. There's a whole half to go. And Brother Martin's a uh, team with a lot of character and a lot of discipline. And I think they'll come back. I don't know how far back. Here's the kick by Katsaratis. Rice will field it at the 16-yard line. Now he fumbles it, picks it up, and he will be hit and dropped at his own 19-yard line. Well, Connie Ray Wilson, a little miscommunication with Price. They couldn't get it straight. They bobbled it around as a result, and Brother Martin got there. And Washita will have it first and 10 for the 19-yard line. Well, that's what they need to have happen. Something good has got to happen for Brother Martin right now to put him back in the ball game. Look at the Crusaders' sidelines, some very concerned young men have to get something done pretty quickly. Look at the Crusaders' defense. You know they have to be down just a little bit. And here's the potent Washita offense again. Glenn Ellis, the quarterback. Kelroy in motion now in the slot, and they give it to Price, running wide. Price for about four to the 24-yard line. Wrapped up by Mark LeBlanc, the fine linebacker. Twin brother of Mike LeBlanc, the cornerback, and we'll see it again. Well, they got him turned back in uh, inside that time, and they held him to four yards, which, you know, you don't want to give up four-yard gains the whole game, but it's better than him getting outside and picking up 10 or 12. So that's what they've got to do. They've got to get him turned back inside. Second down and five yards to go officially. Give him a gain of five to the 24. Opening moments of the second half of the Quad A State Championship game. Washita on top, 21-0. Straight ahead, the fullback dives and kind of trips over the blocker and the defender, Derek Williams, to about the 27-yard line. A gain of a couple, it'll be third and three. Some of the Crusader fans here this evening, and there are quite a few, an excellent crowd for both games this evening. We have had that. We've had excellent crowds. Uh, I thought last night's crowd was excellent for the double-A and the, and the single-A championship, and, and I think we might have had a chance to break a record here tonight. I hope we have. On third and three from the 26-yard line. Big play for the Crusaders here. They're showing blitz, and they run wide again, and there's room. Here comes Price. First down across the 30 to the 31-yard line. 
Oh, it looks like a broken record. Brother Martin comes up with nine or ten men, and Rustin just runs around. Rustin, Washita just runs around him. Well, they got caught it. They got it inside, uh, caught inside again with their support, and, and you can see 20s inside out for Brother Martin, and it makes it difficult to tackle Price with the kind of speed that he has. So a first down for Washita, officially at the 32-yard line with 10-17 to play third quarter. It's 21-0. Lions on top. And the tight formation. That's McElroy in the slot right again. Off the play fake, Ellis wants to throw into the flat. Wide open, he has Williams. Williams in the Crusader territory to the 44-yard line, and another first down for Washita. They slipped the fullback out past the wingback and, and got him in the flat wide open. The tight end ran the seam down the middle of the post, and he was really open, too. He chose to take, here's the replay of it. He chose to take the shorter of the two routes, but he had both of them. Derek Williams, the junior, will see him again next year. Finally brought down by Mark LeBlanc. But another big gainer to the Crusader 43 with 9.43 to play in the third quarter. And Washita seemingly can do it all. Twin receivers left. Wilson is the outside man. Straight drop back by Ellis. Now he'll run. Another dimension, and he drags a tackler up to the 35-yard line, picking up about nine yards. Well, you get pressure on him, and he escapes you. Force him up, and he gains nine yards. That's exactly right. Well, you're going to see him right here, Ken. He just steps up in the pocket, decides to run with the football. Glenn Ellis, 6'2", 190-pound senior. Tackle made by number 80, Troy Blanchard. Bonnie Maisry had the initial pressure, but could not wrap him up. Gain of nine, second and one from the 35-yard line with 8.50 to play in the third quarter. Blitz picked up. Escapes another man, and another. What a move by Ellis to get the first down across the 30. I mean, you're just seeing athleticism at its best. Well, Moore timed it perfectly. He was in the backfield, and the, and the halfback picked him up really nice on a bit blitz pickup, and the rest was just Ellis doing his thing. Well, there it is right there, and he just dodges one, steps up. He's going to dodge another one right here. Right there, he dodges 80, Blanchard. And steps up, and he's going to fall forward here and, and, and pick up the first down. The 29-yard line, first and 10. Ellis gives to Price. Price gets blocking. Price cuts it in, and Price is down. Inside the 25-yard line, about the 24, pick up a five. It'll be second and five. Toby Price. That was a little better by Martin that time. They had, a, they had some people outside and were able to get a containment here. Here's a shot of it. Well, you see Jeremy Pletka, 76, pulling on the play and leading nicely. This is a very good offensive line. There's a good look at the guys in the trenches. Lamar Jean, Jeremy Pletka, Andy Baker, Philip Payne, Eric Bowie, the tight end, Brent Pilgreen. Second down and five, Crusaders show blitz and more is offsides, and that could give Washita a first down. Well, that's really been the story. Brother Martin gambles a lot, and tonight they've, they've had to gamble even more than they normally do, and uh, they're just getting beat at their own game. Dead ball procedure. Red. First down. So you hear the penalty. And that'll give him a first down. The football will be marked at the 19-yard line. Washita with 7.25 to play, leading 21-0, and looking to add to that. Well, Brother Martin's got to come up with a play here. They just can't allow them to come up with another score. Play fake by Ellis. Stops, looks, throws. Over the middle, touchdown, Connie Ray Wilson. In the tight coverage, I might add, squeezed it in between Mark LeBlanc and Oscar Farinas, and it's 27-0 Lions. I mean, he jammed that he football in there. It really did. It was a big-time throw. Here it is here, bootleg to the right, and he's just going to step right in there. And you're going to see he throws the ball between three Brother Martin football players. Connie Ray Wilson, he just sits right in there. 
Murphy, I talk to kids all the time about not worrying about spiraling the football. That boy don't throw a perfect spiral, but he throws it with some snap. It got there in a hurry, and so did the extra point by Justin Clack and a timeout on the field, 7-11 to play third quarter, and it's all Lions. They're raining on the Satyrs Parade, 28-0. This is the Quad A State Championship game of the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Twenty-eight nothing, seven eleven to play third quarter. Washita in total control. They take the opening kickoff. They take all of four minutes and forty-nine seconds to get another score. Connie Ray Wilson again on the receiving end of a touchdown pass. His third touchdown reception of the game from Glenn Ellis. Well, there's and not much secret to it, Kenny. Off. You know they're going to go to the, uh, Ellis is going to go to the uh, Wilson, and it's going to be a big play every time. Here's the kick. LaRose finally gets his hands on the football, but he is brought down at about the 38-yard line. Rose hit hard there by number 22, Anthony Harris, and Brother Martin offensively will start from their own 38-yard line. Bobby Conlon looking on, and boy, what a season it's, it's been for Coach Conlon, and I know he has to be hurting a little bit right now, but although this one isn't over yet, it certainly doesn't look very good. No, it doesn't. Brother Martin has got to make something happen on this drive. Rose has him over the line of scrimmage. This is Stack into the secondary. Stack fighting hard as he always does to about the 48-yard line, and he looks to be close to a first down. Determined young man, Pat Stack, and what a fine career he's had at Brother Martin. Now, the one thing I want to say about Pat Stack as we watch the replay, this young man is a 4.0 student as is Jimmy Lalon, as is Jason Wilson. Their entire starting backfield, mm. they are perfect. Very impressive. In the classroom, and he got his first down. On first and 10, here he is again, Stack into Washington territory to about the 46-yard line. That's a gain of six, it'll be second and four. No quitting, Brother Martin, Henry. I'm gonna tell you, they are, they are still battling and they're still running the football right at them, trying to do what they do best. John Beckwith is down and injured for Washita here. Now that'll be a big loss for them because he's an excellent football player. And just a sophomore, I might add. They tend to Beckwith on the field. 6.34 to play third quarter. It's 28-0. Lions on top of the Crusaders. As we mentioned, it's the first trip to the Superdome Classic for Washita. It's also the first trip for Brother Martin. Of course, Bobby Conlon won a state championship back in 1971, 23-0 over St. Og. And he's been in the semifinals three times since then in 72, lost to Neville in a disputed game after they had to play it over again in the slop and mud after tying the first time. I was talking with Chick Turris about that last night. They came that? back and played on a Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, and, uh, terrible situation. Edda, yes. I think that, that's really what necessitated the change. No question. From the 47 on second and four, this time Stack is shut down. He gets to the 45, a pickup of two. It'll be third down and a long two. They also made the semifinals in 85, losing to St. Martinville 14 to seven. And of course, they were a semifinalist a year ago, losing to Ruston 7-6 in overtime on a disputed extra point call. Thank you. Need a first down here to make something happen. They can't kick the ball to uh, Washtaw again and I think have a chance to win. And Stack finds running room and a first down as he runs behind Jeff Vaughn, the all-metro performer, and Gary Buqua and Chris Stant. Nice job of blocking inside, and the Saders have a first down at the Washington 37. Well, they ran that where the uh, substitution was, too. The big 73 got hurt, and they came right back and ran it to where the substitute was and got a big play out of it. Number 79 had a, a little tougher time. Of course, he's a sub, and that was a good play by Coach Pontiff picking that out from the booth. And a nice play there by Jeff Vaughn, Chris Stan, and Gary Buqua running the, uh, a really good job on a rip. Here's Stack again on first down into the secondary, but a flag down, and that's going to be holding, I am sure. Stack for about seven yards, but hold everything, and I do mean hold everything. You were talking about the sub. It's Charles Marshall, little baby, you know, a sophomore. We have holding on the red team. That little baby, by the way, is 6'3", yeah. 277. <laughs> yeah, he's the sub they just put in, and uh, he's handling two of them right there, it looks like. I think he was the guy that was held on the play. Took two Crusaders to block him. 
And the holding penalty marched off against Brother Martin. And that hurts. That hurts. Back to the 47-yard line where it'll be first and 20. Look at the red helmet, the Crusader helmet. 5.05 and counting third quarter, and it's 28 to nothing. If Brother Martin has any surprises up their sleeve, it wouldn't be a bad time to use it. Lalonde and Chris Wilson wide right. They run Jason Wilson off right tackle, and he gets to about the 41. A pickup of six yards. It'll be second down and 14. Martin is getting a lot of play out of that sprint draw. And they used to run that years ago. I'm going to go back to when they won the state championship, JT, in 71. And they've kept with that sprint draw series where the fullback's going to kick out and they give it to the near back, back up inside. Off the wishbone look. It's a good football play. Second down, we'll call it 15 yards to go from the 42-yard line. Wilson and Stack, the backs. Stack has the football, and he has a yard. Two yards, maybe, to the 40. Couldn't keep his balance because Gene Smith, big number 72 at 266 pounds, and a man got hold of him. Well, here's the, here's the uh, trap play. You can see it on the replay. And he breaks it outside of the trap this time because it's stuffed pretty good. I don't think any other place he could run. You know, that time, the three inside people of Brother Martin really had a tough time handling those two tackles sitting down up inside there. They're really two strong people, and they just shut everything down. Third and 13 from the 40-yard line. The Rose to throw the slant, and uh, any flag? No. They say Connie Ray Wilson had the play on the football. Gets up limping just a bit. Pass was intended for Wilson, but the other Wilson, Connie Ray, read this all the way. Yes, he did. He, it's good the ball was low and away. And it'll be fourth down in a punting situation, so the holding penalty really stops this drive. And Brother Martin's inability to throw the football again comes back to haunt them. Hurts him. And the Rose will punt it away. Angles it toward the sideline wisely, but it takes a big hop and goes into the end zone. Tough break for Chad and the Crusaders. They haven't really had any breaks here this evening, and they trail 28-0 with 3.32 to play. And Washita gets the football back, and that's always bad news for Brother Martin. Well, this quarter's flying by, too. We're down at 3.32, as you said, to go in the third quarter, and this game is very, very quickly slipping away. 28-0, of course, the final score of the single-A championship game. Oak Grove over Haynesville. The double-A championship game won by Jonesboro Hodge, 26-14 over Welsh. We saw a great triple-A championship game won by Crowley, 17-15 over Wasman, and by far the best game yet. They give to Toby Price to about the 24, a pickup at four. And right now, let's go down to the field and a sideline report from Bob Pavlovich. Bob? Ken, just a quick update on uh, Washita number 73, John Beckwith. The sophomore tackle had just a slight knee aggravation. It's uh, the same knee he's got a brace on, but uh, he's going to be right back in there the next time they, uh, they go on defense. Back upstairs to Kenny. All right, thank you, Bob. Toby Price uh, down on this play. He's injured for Washita. Price, of course, has had a superlative game as we look at Mike Valerie and his staff on the sideline. A very happy sideline that has to be. They were fully expecting to get a rematch with Rustin here in the state championship game. But the only team that beat them, 14-13 earlier this year, but Brother Martin changed that. And I don't know if you know, Kenny, but that was done on the last play of the game on a 64, a 65-yard screen pass. So they were anxiously awaiting to revenge that loss to Rustin. There's our story, the clock ticking, 3-10 and counting, 28-0 Lions. Second down and six from their own 24-yard line. Price leaves under his own power. It looks like he'll be back. Ellis, the quarterback. This is McElroy, tripped up. Nice play defensively there. His penetration from Fadi Maisry. Maisry, outstanding defender. All district player, and we haven't called his name much tonight. No, we haven't, Ken. You're right. Majory is a senior. Matter of fact, Brother Martin defensively has nine seniors and two juniors starting. It's a predominantly senior starting Brother Martin team. On offense, they start 11 seniors. Third down five from the 25-yard line. 
in a tight formation for Washita. Brother Martin showing blitz. Flag down. Moore's offside again. That'll give Washita a first down. Negates the sack by Maisry. And Moore was definitely offside. That's the second or third time he's been there. He's done that all year long. He really has. And they usually time it real well. Well, this is a critical mistake. It, it, we have offsides. It hurts on the, the red team. Give him the first down and not give him the ball back, and it's a it's a critical critical mistake. Chad Trosclair, the cousin of uh, Chad LaRose, had the initial pressure, number 83, captain defensively, but indeed it was offsides. And that'll give Washita a first down. The 30-yard line with 2.16 to play in the third quarter. Well, the mistakes that Brother Martin hasn't made all year are coming to roost here this evening. Lots of them. Penalties, turnovers. And against a superior football team, you can't have those. No. This Washita team, by the way, beat Wassman earlier this year, the AAA finalist, 21-16 in a good football game. Again, the blitz. This time they get there in time, and the fumble, and the Crusaders have it. Well, hey, so dog on it, Larry Moore heard me, and he got it right. Timed it perfectly, and the Saders come up with it. Well, that's the big play that we've been talking about before, and you're going to see it right now, an all-out blitz by Moore. It's going to be Chris Twiner, the recover, number 28. Well, that's their philosophy, and it paid off for them this time. They were able to get the turnover. They got the ball in great field position. They need to punch a score in right here. The Twiner Asumich who got in there to recover. Big play by Moore. Crusaders at the 22-yard line, first and 10 with a minute 48 to play in the third quarter. And they run Pat Stack. Stack is stood up at about the 18-yard line to pick up a four. It'll be second down and six. Stanley Jenkins made a great play coming from the inside linebacker. I thought that play was going to go for more yards than it did, and he just recovered and made an excellent, excellent tackle. JT, why doesn't uh, you know a team like Washita, knowing Brother Martin can't throw the ball effectively, do what Brother Martin does, just put nine men up front? Well, they're playing an eight-man front, and they're going to stay safe in the secondary and not give up a big play. Which is sound thinking. Stack. Up high in the score, it's a smart thing to do. Stack to the 16-yard line for a couple. It'll be third down and four. A minute to play third quarter. And you know this is four-down territory. Sure. There's no way the Crusaders will not go for it on fourth down. No, he'll go for it on fourth down. He's just got to average uh, about two and a half yards of carry to get the first down to keep the drive alive. And I know that's what he's thinking. Play comes in from the bench. Kenny Hunter, 36. Everyone tight on third and four for the Crusaders. Try to run right and stack, if anything, loses a yard. I don't think that was designed to bounce outside. I, 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 he needed to bring it up inside where the where the blocking was, and he got lateral, and he just wasn't able to turn it up and pick up any yards at all. Matter of fact, he lost a couple. And Clint Perrineau, the outstanding defensive end, second leading tackler, makes the stop, fourth down, and a long five yards to go. Crusaders will go for it. Clock winding down under 10 seconds, and they may not get this playoff before the quarter ends. Full house backfield. This is pretty much it for Brother Martin. Wilson wide right. They run the reverse. Wilson needs a block. Shakes a tackle, and I don't think he got there. Oh. First, I don't think. Short by a half a yard or so. the replay is a nice fake of the of the pitch and five's got it coming to the corner with the ball the corner stayed home outside there's the tackle who's looking to seal inside but you're going to see the corner show up right where he's supposed to be that's the difference in the play and that's connie ray wilson yes the fourth quarter of the Gatorade Superdome Classic 1A Championship is being brought to you by Gatorade, the official athletic thirst quencher of the LHSAA. By Shoe Town, headquarters for name brand athletic footwear. By Louisiana Power and Light, LPNL and Energy Company. Partners, LPNL and you. And by Avondale. Avondale is investing in your city's future. Why don't you? Well, we've got 12 minutes to play in the Quad A State Championship game. And barring a uh, minor miracle, Washita is going to chalk up the state championship. They lead Brother Martin 28-0. Ken Trahan, along with Henry Rando and J.T. Curtis, and a good look at Glenn Ellis. It's been spectacular offensively. 
Now at first down, they give the Toby Price. Price again turns on the afterburners and gets it out to about the 18-yard line for a pickup of five. It'll be second down and about five yards to go. Number 14, uh, Oscar Farian did a good job of getting over and, and trying to keep the, the play from getting a big gain, and, and he did that. Yeah, a five-yard gain is not what you want, but it, it's a lot better than what, what they had been. It is the replay of it. You're going to see him come in from the free safety spot right here, make a nice tackle on number 20 and, and uh, keep him somewhat under control. Well, again, the difference in this one, the passing game. Rushing thus far, Washington, 164 yards. Brother Martin, 156. That's a wash. The passing department, Washington, 100 and, well, well over 160 yards. Brother Martin does not have a yard passing. Second and six from the 17. Again, they show blitz and back off. And they fumble the football again, and Brother Martin has got it. Trying to run a little inside reverse. That's exactly what they were trying to run, Ken, that little inside counter with the wing back, and they just never did get the handoff there. Brother Martin comes up with their second turnover on two straight possessions here. You're going to see it here. Ellis makes the fake, and the ball is kind of slapped on the ground here. There's 44 coming in and making the recovery, and that's Mike LeBlanc. I, the back never got, never had the ball clearly, did he? No, absolutely. I didn't, didn't look as though he did. Oh. Mike LeBlanc on the recovery blocked the field goal in regulation against Rustin a week ago to give Brother Martin a second chance. Now a look at the Crusader offense, and well, they've got to get it done here. Two straight turnovers deep in Washita territory. They failed the first time, and now they've got it at the 15. First down and 10 yards to go. Officials now having a little discussion. And they're going to add time to the clock here is what they're doing. Bobby Conlon protesting that. There's the clock, 1044. We're told it should be 1057. Every second precious for Brother Martin at this point. Well, this Washita team, what a powerhouse. Merged with Richwood back in 1986 and built all new facilities, virtually a new school and a new field house as the clock is now uh, set at the proper time. And this looks like a power that's going to be around for many years to come. The well, numbers are there. The facilities are there. They say they have absolutely great facilities and that the, the town of Monroe is growing in their direction, and that's one of the reasons that uh, they have got enough good athletes to be in this championship. About 1,800 students, and I understand they're looking to have anywhere between 23 and 2,500 over the next three or four years. So Washington is a team we're going to be hearing from a lot in the future. Well, we've seen Rustin, we've seen Neville many, many times in the Superdome Classic. Same area. This Washita team comes from. What a district that was this year. Three of the best teams in the state, all no, in one district. No question. And I hope we haven't uh, passed up the coaching job that Mike Valerie and no. his staff has done, because it's certainly excellent talent, but they are well coached and well put together. On the option, LaRose in trouble and down, and they just can't run that play. It's just not there with that defensive speed in pursuit. Well, Lee Williams, free safety, he's in the alley, and, and he's just not able to make the turn before he's got him. Here's the replay. He looks like he's got it right here, and you're going to see the free safety 49 filling right there. Just no place to run. That enables Stanley Jenkins to make yet another stop. He's made quite a few of those. Yes, he has especially with Chad Green injured much of this game with an ankle problem. Second down and nine from the 14-yard line. Jason Wilson on a slant to about the 11, close to the 10, a pickup of three, third and six. That was that spread draw again, Henry. They came close to breaking it. Well, tough play off of that, of course, is he definitely has the keep and the pitch off of that where he's able to go ahead and fake the sprint draw, keep the ball, and either go ahead and uh, turn it up inside himself, or he's able to pitch it to the trail in half Correct. that. Look at Chad LaRose in the offense. Lee Marcia comes in with a play from the sideline, and the Crusaders are taking an awful lot of time here. They have to hurry up to just to get this playoff. Twin receivers left. LaRose, quick drop, throws. Did he catch it? I, I think, think he may he have. Caught yeah. it, but he might be a hit. No, he's going I think he's got right the first it. down, yeah. Good route by Chris Wilson and an excellent catch. That should get him the first down. First completion by Brother Martin in the game. Donnie Ray 
Wilson defending. And a first down, Brother Martin, and goal to go from the five-yard line. 9.30 to play. Kenny Hunter checks in for Brother Martin. As does number 87, Scott Legast, the starting tight end. Two tight ends set. Hunter and Legas on first and goal. Give to Jimmy Lalonde this time. I haven't seen him much. Lalonde kind of crawls to the two. Be second and goal. Pretty good blocking there. It was excellent blocking. And, uh, Jimmy got tripped. Here's the replay. He must have got tripped right in the line. As well, he makes a nice move right there off the tackle on the down block. Right, good run by him. That was a better run than it looked like in the press box. Sure it? did, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent run. Martin likes to run the belly on the goal line, fake it to the fullback, give it to the second back through. They get that extra blocker in there by being in the, in, in the wishbone. From the two, Stack is stopped. Stack of maybe a half a yard. And he simply ran into some heavy traffic, led by number 43, Michael Allen, who's been playing at linebacker in place of Shad Green. So it's third and goal from the two. No gain officially. And the yards come grudgingly, and the clock just melts away. 8 10 and counting. Option LaRose stopped. To the one yard line. No more. And there's that free safety there again, he is. Lee Williams. Lee Williams, he made an excellent fill at the corner. That's just how it's drawn up on the blackboard. Here's the play. That looks like Chad's in. That's good strength, good power. Keeps him out of the end zone. That's one guy you just don't account for blocking the free safety as we see it again. And you almost have you almost have to change your, your blocking scheme to you account do. for this guy. He's a spy out there, and he gets there every time. Fourth down and goal from the one. Lalonde, he's in. Touchdown, Brother Martin. Jimmy Lalonde from a yard out, and it's 28 to 6, Washita. Brought the power play off tackle to the right, banged it in there. Escher, who won the game against Ruston a week ago with a field goal in triple overtime, is on to try the extra point. And Eric Escher has it. Kenny, Bobby's got a decision here now if he's going to onside kick and try to win this football game or play conservative and hope he'll have another big break on defense. It's not an easy decision to make. Good, but here's the touchdown. Jimmy Lalonde powered in off tackle. Excellent blocking. Pat Stack in the middle. 7-21 to play. 28-7 Lions. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Seven twenty-one to play, 28-7 Washita. Ken Trahan along with Henry Rando and JT Curtis. Will we see the onside kick? That's the million dollar question here. They almost have to in this situation. They have not been able to stop the Lions very much. And even if they are to stop them, the time is the critical factor. You need three scores to have a chance. Well, we're going to find out right now what's going to happen here. That looks like they're going to give it a shot. There it is. Perfect bounce for Washita right into the hands. Number 71, Lamar Jean, the big tackle. Washita will have it at the Brother Martin 47. Still, you can't argue with that. No, at all. I have That's no right complaint with do. that at all. And Lamar Jean made his whole Superdome classic, baby. Big tackle, feeling that ball clean. He'll be having to score two years from now. He's going to ask for a million. He's going to uh, think he's a third baseman. Yeah. The touchdown drive, well, it took uh, three minutes and six seconds, or actually three minutes, 36 seconds, to go 15 yards, and that's just too much time. But Brother Martin does dent the scoreboard as Jimmy Lalonde scores from a yard out on fourth down. Here's Price in trouble in the backfield. Cuts it back and gets a yard, perhaps. A lot of traffic there, and Mark LeBlanc leads the charge defensively along with Fadi Masry. That's really interesting watching that. Now, that's the same play that Washita has been running all game long, and now all of a sudden Martin is getting a tremendous amount of penetration. Right. So 
second down and nine from the 46-yard line. Keep it on the ground, and they find running room and a nice tackle in the open field at the 42-yard line. Were it not for that stop by Chris Twiner, Chris it could have been a big play. Excellent tackle. Twiner, the free safety at 170 pounds, a senior. Brother Martin's side of the field finally with something to cheer about on that last touchdown. I haven't had the crowd noise that we had in the AAA game. No, we really didn't. That AAA game was a lot of excitement. They got the Dallas worth in that one. Six minutes to play and under six minutes now. Third and five from the 41-yard line. Run price outside, and they got all kinds of room. First down and more inside the 35 and down to the 30-yard line. Kobe Price for 11 yards, and he now has 18 carries, 131 yards. Well, you Jay, we talked too, we talked too soon that time. I know it. I know it. You know, Henry, I can't decide if they're calling that play or he's make, I, making that read or a check at the line. But it seems like when Brother Martin gets stacked inside, they're coming outside right where they don't have the support lined up. Well, a future crusader, perhaps. Good to see you, too. Thanks for coming to the Superdome Gatorade Classic. Quad A state championship game, Washita. Just melting the clock away with a 21-point lead from the Crusader 30-yard line. And sticking it straight up for a more yardage, six or seven is Toby Price. No, that's not Price, that's Derek Williams, the fullback, excuse me. And they just pound on the Brother Martin defense, which, by the way, has been out there more than they're used to being out there. Brother Martin usually dominates time of possession, and they, although they might have a slight edge in that department, it's not nearly as decisive as they normally have. Well, and sometimes that can be misleading because, like Washita being able to throw the ball as well as they did, they're going to give you the ball back real quick. On the 23-yard line, second down and three play a yard it'll be third and two and that was McElroy wrapped up by 31 Mark LeBlanc Larry Moore hit him in the backfield and almost caused a fumble again Moore, Sumich, Masry they blitzed these guys all year long had great success it's gotten them this far Crusader bench perhaps realizing the inevitable there's Eric Bowie and boy is he big and he's a fine player. Good prospect. Bench presses 350 pounds, and he's an honor student to boot. That's a great combination, isn't it? Yeah, you can pretty much write your own ticket with those credentials. You're darn right. Third and two from the 22-yard line. Quarterback perhaps missing the handoff, and Ellis dives forward and got maybe a yard. I don't think that was a design play. It was a mess up somewhere in the backfield. Here's Mike. He's done a heck of a job. No question about it. The former Neville assistant knows what it's like to be here. He was here with Neville quite a few times. Now he's here as a head coach, and it obviously hasn't phased him or his team. They've played brilliantly. Uh, you know, Henry, it must be a style in the Monroe area because the quarterback's going to the side for them and getting to play, too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking notes on that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Fourth and one from the 21-yard line. They'll go for it. And they'll get it with McElroy across the 20 to about the 18-yard line. And they... Just a power play right off tackle. Big, big offensive line for Washita just controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, they really seal it off inside. He runs in there real well behind those two backs. Back yeah, Elroy. Six foot two, 290 pounds. Good idea to run behind mm -hmm. Eric Bowie, too. Now us back on the field, and, uh, well, some of the fans trying to get out and beat the traffic, if you will, with 248 to play, and the outcome definitely decided. Washington will win this football game. The question is by what score, and there's the blitz by Moore again. Ill-timed and a five-yard penalty. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Five yards on the red. First down. And it's possible that some people had watched these telecasts, and in particular this game, are sitting at home and saying, well, why do they keep doing that? Well, that's how they got here. These are the things that they do with 2.30 to play and counting. 
They and take chances, and they've had great success and, doing it. And that's important, Kenny. You've got to do what's been good to you all year, and that's been good to them. I know the boy's disappointed. I, I've been there before myself. On the 14-yard line, first down and five. Running wide, Price. This time is hit and brought down for a loss of a yard or two, and a nice play defensively by Chris Twiner coming up from free safety. Did stay in bounds, however, and that's good news for Washita. Mike LeBlanc did a good job stringing that out and, and making uh, Price run east and west, and, and Twiner was able to get over and make the big play. Hey, look at the huddle for Washita. Look at number 51. I, he don't belong out there. I look at him. Ross, he, he's 5'8", 170. You know, he's, he looks like a dwarf in front of all those guys. That's Andy Baker. <laughs> I tell you, Andy said, hey, there's a little, there's a place in this game for the little man, too. Right. If we can get a close-up on him over the ball with his hand pad. Yep. From the end zone, maybe. If we can get an end zone shot. Well, we might have an end zone shot here in a minute. If McElroy <laughs> does inside the 10, fumbles late, but uh, he was down. And they'll mark it at the 8-yard line, and that'll be a first and goal for the Washita Lions. And the clock will continue to run. They may just let it run out with a minute 16 to play. Brother Martin certainly will not stop it in this situation with Washington threatening to score. 116 to play. They stop it to move the chains. Now they start it again. That's the score. You know, Kenny, it's great to see a kid like Andy Baker playing. He, not a big kid, but loves football, obviously, and obviously he's a great effort kid. And, and I know Brother Martin has the same kind of kids in their squad, too, and obviously it does me good to see those kind of kids playing. On first and goal. The fake by Ellis, he keeps. Ellis scores, what an athlete. Boy, oh boy. And it's 34 to seven, Washita, as Glenn Ellis scores from eight yards out. Here it is, he just fakes it, he brings it to corner with the guard pulling, and he just knifes in between them. I thought Brother Martin was gonna tackle him. They looked like they were in position here, 38, 44. Right. And he just kind of like turns sideways and, and goes in for the touchdown here. Pure athletic ability. As Bass Sidney Bethalamy. And the kick is up. The kick is good. And Washita opens up their lead a little bit more now by the score of 35 to 7. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Ready for the kickoff, Washita leading here with just 48 seconds remaining in the ball game. We got a new kicker, Henry. Looks like they're gonna play some kids. Justin Clack is gonna kick off for uh, Washita. I think they've been kicking off. Uh, uh, who was kicking off for them before? Uh, he's been, he's, no, uh, Stanley Jenkins has right. been doing the kickoff. Right. They're gonna let Clark uh, Clack kick it. Washita tonight has had 38 running plays for 220 yards. The last drive was a 12-yard drive, or uh, really 42-yard drive in, in 12 plays. Ellis taking the last eight in for the score. It's kind of a short end-over-end kick. Taken there by Lalonde. So Brother Martin will have 43 seconds left to go here, and it's somewhat elementary, Watson. Yeah, there's no question about that. I know they're disappointed, and that's a, that's a hard feeling, Henry. I've had to stand there before with the hopeless feeling of knowing there's just not anything else you can do, but, but play with a little pride and a little toughness and, and recognize that you've had a great season, and, and they've accomplished things that people didn't think they could. Well, that's the thing that you've got to reflect on. I know it's hard to do it at this time, but after when you sit back and look at it, the Rose handing off there. Well, it is tough, uh, but they're going to have great memories of this season. They came back from from uh, two hard losses in the middle of the season and got themselves into the playoffs and played a tough, tough game with, with Shaw and just rebounded. And, you know, I thought they improved tremendously as a football team. Yes, they did. They were picked fourth in the district behind Shaw, St. Aug, and Rummel. Rose taking the ball and just kind of trips on his own man there. Six seconds remaining. Well, Martin does call a timeout here. 
There's no quitting, Brother Martin. They're going to try to put one on the board, and I don't blame him. Again, I think we need to, to be very, very complimentary to Mike Valerie and, and his staff, uh, who has done just a tremendous job. Tremendous job with this football team. They can be very, they really very proud. have. You know, they're going to go to 13 and 1 on the year. Brother Martin is going to go to 11 and 4. Like you said, Jay, it's a tremendous effort by Washington. They, they overcame a, a Neville Rustin stigma no that's question. kind of dominated that District 3 uh, Quad A for the last, at least the last eight or nine years. And Washington now, it looks like it's the new kid on the block. Yep. Sprint draw to Wilson. And that's it. We have a new Quad A state champion, the Washita Lions of District 3 Triple A, uh, 3 Quad A. By the final score, Washington 35, Washita Lions 35, the Brother Martin Crusaders 7. We're going to take a break right now, and then we'll come on back with Kenny on the field.